Welcome to Ricardo's Crossing. Okay, I just did basically the whole video talking to myself, and I didn't even record it. And I just went through all these cards, what I did and what happened, and shuffled everything, and totally lost the plot. Okay, so today's cards with the Magical Nordic Tarot. Knight of Cups. With the Yagdrazo, I got Ask, which is the first human, and I got in the Rune Spirals from Chuckle Tarot from Nina and Zeus. Okay, so we're talking about a sense of here we've got the Dreamer. Okay, and we've got this first human, which talking, oh god, let me go through this book again. I just got totally lost the plot and so just excuse me going absolutely crazy while I just reread everything again I just went through and read all of this so let's have a look at Knight of Cups Knight of Cups talks about being idealistic, childish, imagination and creativity the Knight of Cups is the hopeful romantic of the gift, idealistic, charming and charismatic who follows his feet his heart rather than head, and is the classic knight in shining armour, bringing us hope of the happy ending we seek, a dreamer rather than a thinker, who acts on emotion rather than reason, and often predicts the arrival of an exciting offer. So it definitely feels like something new and exciting is going to arrive at some stage. I'm not going to talk about the world and romance, new work opportunities and marriage characters are all possible. And these looking for love could be swept off their feet. To find more than just one suit here. But be cautious, people's words may not always translate into action. But I think it's definitely about a new arrival, something new and exciting happening. So here we've got the um, Ask Girl or Ask. With the deity. Okay, so. Here we have Aster is the first human, male human, created from a trunk of wood found by Odin, Vili and V on a beach in Midgard. Odin gave him the breath of life, Vili and animated him and gave him intelligence, and V, speech, hearing and sight along with an outward appearance. Aster is made from a trunk of an ash tree, which is a hard wood, the same tree as the tree of life, of life itself. Askur is the proto-man and his significance in the spirit is a new life, a new undertaking, a new relationship, not necessarily romantic, or a new venture in the world, yet unknown to the seeker. But he is also one of influence, depending on the connotations of the cards based on some surrounding cards, of course. He can also signal a new beginning, <coughs> excuse me, or a clean slate in the seeker's professional life. Okay, so there's definitely something new and exciting happening. happening. And then we have our spoofs, which talks about this communication. Odin's breath on the land. Let me just clean it up here. Odin's breath. Communication, inspiration, ancestors, how we express ourselves mental agility, reason, and consciousness. And Zeus is the rune of Odin, associated with the spoken word, song, poetry, and magical incantation. Look, for me, I feel like this is really about self-expression, communication. So when we're, when we're looking at what's going on here, we've got this new announcement coming, a new opportunity, being able to communicate clearly about what's going on, being able to, yeah, communication is really, really important in this announcement, this thing, this new venture, whatever is happening here. So quite exciting. So then we go through and do the Knight of Wands. So Knight of Wands talks about being hot-headed, unwilling to change, spontaneity and immaturity. But here we've got a sense of impulsiveness. So we might have this thing about this new announcement, this new venture, something going on, but we do have to keep it, we're not going to be too impulsive 
in the situation as well. There is a sense of being, being careful not to be the, the wild child, um, being daring, brave and obsessed with his freedom. He lives life on the edge and encourages you to do the same. So I think there's a sense of being cautious. Significant progress can be expected in all areas of life going from zero, zero to a hundred quickly and dramatic. So it could be things to happen quite quickly in the process as well. Sighting nights out, so it's not the last minute vacation is fabulous. Parties are all on the horizon, work on the happen while we're looking to be loved and be swept off the feet by an exotic stranger. Job offers abroad, relocations overseas. I'd say changes in residence are also possible. So it could be to do with that process, could be something to do with the change of residence. Maybe things are going to happen quite quickly once we get the ball rolling, once we get that announcement, maybe coming up at some stage. Interesting. So then we have that frosty, again, that mindfulness, um, light and spirit. Definitely feels... Let's see if I can remember where this card is. Ooh, take a deep breath. Here we go. Frosty is for your, your sun. He represents the lightness and impermanence of the snowflake and so the lightness of the spirit. Lightness can be seen as frivolous quality, but and also in some situations of great strength. The strength that comes with being mindful in the moment. In a way, his present implements a lesser version of Gordon Yorts, a true tribute of temperament, temperance through lightness. A frosty appears in a spread. Oh. Frosty represents the moment. Like music, we only exist in the moment we listen to it. And like the frost in the window, only existing until you breathe on it. Frosty can be called upon for the moment to be aware in a given moment. He is the element of ice and frost, clear and cool but fleeting. And least season, this element of frost in the last year being pretty strong. strong. So it could be this impulsiveness being in the moment. Could be in the moment. And here we have the, the moon. So let's have a look at this one. Okay, the waning present, this is a time where we surrender, rest and recuperate and reflect. Go easy on yourself, start to think about dreams again and allow hope to guide and inspire you. Let go of anything that no longer serves you. So it could be about releasing some stuff. And then we've got dragons here. Right, so here we go. Day, which is the day one, which is day, dawn, light, enlightenment breakthrough, awakening, prosperity, the power to change, self, well-being and polarity. So Dagas means day. So what could be more perfect for this card than the image of the sun rising on Ugin and Moon and Odin's two trusty ravens, you might know. Dagas represents the polarity of night and day, light and dark, the moment of sunrise and the moment of sunset. It can be about the light of awakening within yourself and connecting and being one with the light around you. Dagars is related to daylight and divine light. It's the rune of enlightenment, awakening. Dagars represents transformation. So there could definitely be some changes going on. So when we're reflecting on what's actually going on, it does allow for the transformation and the changes to come in. So here we've got this being in the moment, um, which is really, really important does not sort of think too far ahead. Just be in the moment, enjoy the process. So there's new stuff going on. Um, so there could be this new venture and being able to express myself clearly. And it does feel as though it's quite impulsive. It does 
feel like it's very much in the moment, so it's important to just take a step and reflect and allow the transformation and the changes to actually take place. Now we've also, I'm not going to read all the details of the book, if you want to know more I would suggest you get the cards yourself and also order the book as well. Okay, Dagar is a fire element and this powerful fire energy can be hard to get things done, but be careful not to burn things up. So rune of change and the waxing and the waning moon. Now was that present? Was the waning present? Isn't that interesting? That this is about the waning moon, and here we have the waning present card. So interesting that they sort of go together. Okay, now three cards actually flipped out separately. So let's have a look and see what these three cards are all about. Okay, we've got Darod, which is suspense behind the mask. So I feel like what's hidden? What's hidden from the process? And here we have the first human woman. This to me I just got creative energy, the birth of something. So this is interesting. So let's have my could look at that a little bit more in depth, I think. And here we've got Zeroken, judgment and final decision. So it does feel like there are some major decisions to come into play. So here we've got this what's hidden at the moment. And let's have a look at Imbla. Darod, okay, Darod is the queen of the world of the Dark Elves. Her allegiance is called upon to stay with the seeker and become part of one. It was not easy to shoot. Mm. Barrowed manifests as the mask as part of the present complex form in a variety of ways, and her name means conflict. conflict. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so there could be a lot of conflicts and things going on as we check those, we look at what's been hidden. It's interesting because a lot of these um, gods and goddesses have, or deities, have both masculine, or deities have both masculine and feminine energies within that, you know, um, opposites of them. It's quite interesting to read through and have a look. Here we go, Embla, the first human woman. Embla is the first female human created from a trunk of wood found by Odin. Again, we get the Odin gave her breath, Billy, and a breath of life. Billy animated her and gave her intelligence, and V gave her speech, hearing, and sight, along with the outward appearance. Her name suggests that she is made from the elm tree. So that's interesting, which is a softwood prized by artisan wood carvers for its beautiful and unusual markings. Embla is a proto woman, and her significance in this thread is one of new life. Ah, so it's like when you're shedding the old skins. To me, this feels like as you're shedding the mask, as you're removing what was hidden, you're bringing new life into the situation. Okay, a new approach to something concerning the person or private life of a new relationship with a loved one or a new relationship with someone yet unknown to the seeker. I'm not going to think about childbirth, not my own, not, not going to have a child, but it's Okay, much depends on the placement and feelings of the card, of course. So this to me is definitely feels like there's a new beginning. Like this whole spread was talking about a shift. So as we find what's been hidden, there's here's this new aspect coming into fruition in some way. Well, Esther is in the reading, isn't it? 
I'm about to live stream you between two people. Stop talking about me. Okay. You're broken. Let's have a look. Oops. So, they're broken. Let's have a look. The last one here. Heroken. Judgment and final decision. Heroken is a giantess who, who, who present represents truth of mind in a tough situation and the relief that comes when making a decision after a period of indecisiveness. When the world lost Baldur the white energy being was dumbstruck with grief, all the gods attended his huge funeral in full chariot. And they would, and there were giants and frost giants, elves and dark elves, and beings from the other worlds all present there. But no one could move Baldur's funeral ship, not even Thorn. Despite vigorous attempts, the gods had to summon the strongest being in the cosmos, Heroken. The giantess was called upon and came riding on a giant, magnificent horse using poisonous snakes as snakes or brain. No god, giant, or any other being could hold the horse. Once Heroken dismounted with one push, he propelled Baldur's ship from shore so that the earth trembled. The earth often trembles from Heroken and his horse. He represents the impressive and strong decision making. The card signifies the end of a period of indecisiveness, a steadfast decision, one that can even shake the foundation of the Seeker's Honor in previous decision making and a turn of events into an unexpected but decisive direction. Oh, that feels like something to really reflect on. Oh, this feels like there's a lot going on here with this. So this is interesting to look at these cards and see the sense of um, being in alignment, being this new announcement coming, new ventures happening, this ability to sort of being able to communicate clearly what's really really important at the time maybe being cautious about not being um too forward thinking maybe sort of being a bit more in the now being in the moment being reflective as things change things definitely change as you sort of come out of what's being hidden you know what's being hidden is being revealed the sense of bringing forth something new and exciting comes from making very clear decisions. So I think that's part of the communication, being able to communicate clearly so that decisions can be made um, fully. So yeah, a lot going on. Okay, so that's it for me. Wow. Don't forget to check the links below, check the links on my channel, like, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded.